Hello everyone, today I'm going to be starting a new topic on energy, so uh, renewable energies, non-renewable, um, things against and pro each of them, um, fossil fuels, nuclear, so a little bit of everything, okay? So energy demands. So let's start with the demand that we have for energy. Now, if you think about it, most of the demands that we have, or most of the base load of the energy that we need to keep the country running, is met by burning fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are things like coal, oil, and gas, natural gas. Uh, and they are non-renewable. Now, if you think about in Key Stage 3, you learn about fossil fuels. So they, they came from the remains of either animals that lived in land or in the sea. Um, and it takes billions, millions and billions of years for them to form. So they are non-renewable, OK? Uh, we also have nuclear power, biofuels, and renewable that can be used to meet the demand. But as you can see on this chart that I got from the AQA, uh, you have that coal, uh, coal, uh, coal. <laughs> I was going to say coal, oh my god, I cannot even say, I want to say coal and oil, but I just said the two words together in one. So coal and oil, each are 31% contributing, 31% for meeting the demand. And then is gas, so look at this. This is all the non-renewables, fossil fuels, nuclear 4%, hydroelectricity and other renewables, in total, they contribute for 10%, uh, okay? This is as it is at the moment, all right? So we are meeting the energy demand that we have, but by mostly, we are doing this by mostly burning fossil fuels, okay? Now, how does a fossil fuel power station work? This actually works for, I say coal, but it works for the other ones just as well, okay? So this exercise, if you want, you pause the video here and you try to connect by looking at the pictures, see how the pictures could connect and then trying to get the words uh, and the steps into the right order. But otherwise, I'm going to carry on now. So don't, um, you know, you pause the video if you want to try this. Otherwise, let's just see how a, pole, a coal power station work. Again, I want to say coal and power at the same time and just came out as coal pole. So, in a power station, first, fossil fuels are burnt, okay? So this energy is used to heat the water and turn the water into steam. And that's what you have in there. So you have the, uh, the fossil fuel being burned, then you have the water and the steam, okay? Now, this steam needs to go somewhere, right? So this steam is going to be forced through large fans, and they are called turbines, these fans. And they make the turbines go around. So here we go. The steam goes in. Uh, the steam is... Um, has kinetic energy, makes the turbine to start moving. Then again, the turbine is connected to a generator. So the turbine is going to, as it turn, make a generator turn. So these generators are massive magnets. Uh, they are inside of, ma um, or they are magnets inside massive coils of wire. I'm just trying to talk too fast today. And a moving uh, magnet inside a coil of wire creates electricity and electric current. This is something that you're going to learn about later on, but just trust me that if I have either a magnet moving inside a coil of wire or coils of wire moving in, uh, inside a magnet, electricity is generated, okay? And it's the picture that corresponds to it. So this is the end of the turbine. This is spinning. It makes this magnet inside of this coil of wire to spin and this generates electricity. This is why it's called generator, okay? Now, I'm going to skip the step of the transformer because there's, there's going to be a lesson just about transformers. So I use the transformers to make the process more efficient. That's all that I'm going to tell you just not right now. And then the electricity is going to be flown around uh, cables in the national grid. And this is the example. Here are the pylons. These are the cables. So this is the process on how we, number one, generate the electricity and then get it into the whole of the country, okay? This is in a power station, a fossil fuel power station, but as you're going to see, in a nuclear power station, the, pro the, the system is very similar or the process is very similar. Now, in nuclear power stations, what I'm going to use as fuels is going to be plutonium or uranium, okay? So, in a nuclear power station, I have the reactor. So, that's the place where, in the beginning, I would have the fuel, right? 
and then I would burn this fuel. Now I have the reactor. And the reactor is made of two things. It's made of the fuel rods where the fission takes place. I'll get there into more detail in a second. And it has these control rods. And these control rods are made of boron and absorb neutrons. Now, when I'll tell you about nuclear fission, you will understand a little bit more of this. But at this stage, you only need to know that you have the reactor and fission is going to happen in the center. Now, this fission is because the uranium atoms are going to split into smaller nuclei, or the uranium nucleus, sorry, or nuclei, are going to split into smaller nucleus, and the control rods are there to absorb neutrons. Whenever I have a fission reaction, I get neutrons that are released, three neutrons. And if I don't absorb the neutrons, um, something like what happened to Chernobyl can happen, which is uh, the reaction gets out of control because each neutron is going to contribute to a new fission reaction. So the reaction gets out of control. I get a chain reaction that I cannot control. Each fission reaction generates a lot of heat. I can have the reactor to overheat and it can cause an explosion, sending all the radioactive materials, which are created in the reactors to be spread around a large area for a, a large, uh, long amount of time. So this is basically, in a very summarized way, what happened in Chernobyl, okay? So, the reactor at the center, right? And then I'm going to have a coolant. Is a fluid that is going to be pumped through the reactor because I don't have something to um, directly heat up the fluid or the water. So I'm going to have the coolant, here it is, passing through the place where I'm going to have some, uh, some heat. So this, in the reactor, I have the fission taking place. And then because all the reactor is going to be hot, the cables or the, uh, the tubes that pass through the reactor will be in contact with the coolant. And this is going to heat up the coolant, okay? Again, my coolant heats up, so I get the water in the boiler to, to, uh, to evaporate and turn into steam, okay? So it evaporates. Again, the steam makes the turbines to turn, and then the turbine, as it turns, it turns the generator, so it makes the generator spin. And you already know that whenever I have a generator spinning, then it generates electricity, and this electricity is going to be sent around the cables through the national grid using the pylons and the cables. There is also the transformers, okay? So as you can see, the process between the nuclear and the coal power station or fossil fuel power station is extremely similar. The only difference is how do I get the steam? From the moment I get the steam, the system is always the same. You do have a condenser in here, which is trying to make the power station more efficient. So um, you have all this water that turns into steam. And then if you can, you will cool the steam down back into water so you can reuse that water. This generates a more efficient process overall. Okay, So many power stations use cool and uh, cool, uh, cooling or condensing towers. Okay. Now, that part of the control rods, let me play. This is not my slide, it's from Footprints. The other ones were all my slides. This is how it looks like inside of the reactor. So I'll show you the answer straight away. I have my fuel rods. I have concrete because concrete is going to make uh, to try to ensure that no radiation leaves the reactor. Okay. I get the graphite core, the boron control rods, the coolant, and the coolant is going to make the water to. You already know what it makes, right? So the control rods is why I'm showing you this. Once I put the control rods down, I'm going to have the co the boron to absorb neutrons. So this means that this absorbs the, pr the products of the fission reaction, which are three newtons per fission reaction, okay? And because each neutron can contribute to a new fission reaction, yes, yeah, you can imagine, this process can get out of hand very easily. So whenever I feel like I need to slow down or stop my fission reaction, what I do is I put the control rods down again. And once I put them down, this is going to absorb neutrons. I will slow down the rate that fission is taking place or even stop it completely if I want, okay? So control rods in, absorb neutrons. Uh, fuel rods out, so I, I am either stopping or slowing down the reaction. 
if I take the control rods, then I can start my fission reaction, okay? This is a little bit of an extra. All right, so I told you how nuclear and uh, coal or fossil fuel power stations work. I told you about the safety in terms of nuclear power stations by using control rods. And I told you that most of the electricity that we have so far is generated by using fossil fuels uh, and nuclear, which are both non-renewable. Now, there are these things called biofuels. Now, if you think about biofuels and you separate the word into two, you have biobiology, so something that is alive or a living organism or recently living organism, and fuels. So it's a fuel that I get from something that is alive or that was recently alive. So biofuels are renewable. They are renewable sources of energy. But I'm not putting them together in the renewable video uh, because they, I'll, I'll explain in a second, so just hold on. So biofuel is going to be any fuel that is taken from a living or recently living organism. Examples are methane, ethanol, animal waste, wood chip. And what I do is I can burn these fuels. Now the thing is, they... Because I'm burning, and a process of burning or combustion is carbon dioxide, I am adding carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So that is why I'm not putting in the same lesson as all the other renewables, okay? However, biofuels are carbon neutral, and this comes a lot in exams. They are called carbon neutral because, and again, let's think about what this means. It means that it's neutral in terms of carbon. So it kind of means that the net carbon, the overall carbon, is zero. So they are carbon neutral because the carbon the living organism takes from the atmosphere when they are alive balances out the amount of carbon that is released when the fuel is burned. So this is why they are called carbon neutral biofuels. Um, so our fuels. So biofuel is something that is coming from something that is alive or recently alive. I burn them. When I burn, the combustion does release carbon dioxide into the into the atmosphere. However, it balances out with the amount of carbon that the animal or with whichever living organism took out of the atmosphere while it was alive, okay? And therefore, they are called carbon neutral. All right, now let's just look a little bit, just finalize this lesson about nuclear power stations and fossil fuel power stations, okay? And later on, I'm going to refer to this again when we're talking about more advantages and disadvantages. This lesson is more like giving you information. So the fuel for nuclear power stations is uranium or plutonium. The fuel for fossil fuel power stations is coal, oil, or gas. By the way, this table is from AQA. So again, my slides are always mine unless there is something that I took from elsewhere and then I'll let you know, okay? Now, the energy release per kilogram of fuel, and it's very important that when you're answering a question that you say that is per kilogram because if you leave it in the air, the examiner, when he's marking your exam, is not really going to know, all right? So make sure that you say the energy that is released per kilogram of fuel is... 300,000 megajoules for nuclear power station, while in a fossil fuel power, power station is 30 megajoules. So that means that in a nuclear power station, you have about 10,000 times the energy released per kilogram of fossil fuel. So nuclear power station is going to generate much more energy per kilogram of fuel than a fossil fuel power station. Now, the waste. Now is the downside. While fossil fuel power stations do not have any radioactive waste, nuclear power stations do. And this waste needs to be stored for many, many years, okay? And again, in contact with people, this is highly dangerous. So this is an issue, and this is something that still needs to be solved long-term, because at the moment we have some solutions, but really long-term there is nothing. Finally, greenhouse gases, do they emit greenhouse gases, something like carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor? Well, a nuclear power station doesn't because uranium releases energy without burning. However, a fossil fuel power station, because you're burning the fuel, it does. So fossil fuels produce gases such as carbon dioxide when they burn. The same with biofuels. They do produce carbon dioxide as well. It's just that they do take in as well uh, when that living organism is alive, okay? 
So as you can see, nuclear power station gives me much more energy per kilogram, does not give me problems in terms of global warming because it does not release uh, carbon dioxide or other greenhouse gases. However, it does have a massive issue, which is the radioactive waste. When something goes wrong in a nuclear power station, it can go very, very wrong. And again, think about Chernobyl. There was also the accident in Japan after the earthquake. That was not so much an accident like in Chernobyl. This was caused by the earthquake. And it was relatively controlled, but again, there were issues with the radiation. Now, fossil fuel power stations have no issue with radioactive wastes. However, they do damage the planet and they are not giving me as much energy per kilogram, okay? So, this is it for today. I'm giving you like a little bit of a hint of what is coming to go uh, or what is coming next in other lessons, which is to do with comparing different energy resources and the pros and the cons about all of them. How can we meet the demand the best way? Uh, but today it was more about telling you how nuclear, fossil fuel and biofuels work and telling you that our demand is mostly met by using non-renewable sources, especially fossil fuels. So I hope it made sense. More lessons coming up. Now uh, I'm focusing a little bit more on um, energies, but uh, there are going to be some A-level lessons coming up on astrophysics, okay? So up to my next video. Take care. Bye.